Hey folks, Tim here from Rockout Videography again. Today's video is going to be about home recording studio design. And this first episode is about the planning phase. Now, I recently posted a video showing a, a tour of the 2017 tour of my home recording studio. And in that video, I mentioned that there were going to be a lot of changes happening. And some of the changes have already started to happen. I've been painting and I've been moving things around. So let's talk about why... Uh, things needed to change, what we're planning to do and why we're planning to do it. Okay, folks, so here we are in SketchUp. This is a great program, by the way. It's, it's really simple to use, really quick to learn. So here's the room. Basically, you've got your back wall over here is 29 feet wide. And uh, <laughs> this wall right here, 12 feet three inches you've got 13 feet right here it's 16 feet from the back wall to the short wall here on the stairwell and it's 23 and a half feet to this wall right here so it's a big room it's approximately 4192 square feet um, I'm sorry that's cubed right that's total volume not including down the stairwell and down this hallway so that's pretty good uh, bigger is always better with low frequencies. Quick overview again, right there. That's what I have to work with. Now, you can go back and watch my uh, studio tour if you want. But here is basically what it used to look like. Not everything's included here in this 3D model, but you, you get the idea if you haven't seen my studio tour before. So you can see right over here, this is, this is where the biggest problem was. This is a horrible spot for mixing. You've got like maybe eight feet from the monitors to the back wall. You had speaker boundary interference over here. You've got your point of first reflection here and here. Then you had all the way back to here. And... When I first set this room up in this configuration, basically I was ignorant. Um, I, but I've spent the last two years studying room acoustics and getting educated about all this stuff. I've been watching uh, Graham Cochran's Recording Revolution and uh, Warren Hewitt's Produce Like a Pro. And I've been stalking on the uh, Gear Sluts forums and reading stuff from the likes of Ethan Weiner and... Glenn Curris from GIK. And so now I know that what you really need is a balanced mixing position and it has to be treated acoustically or it's pretty much worthless. And that's, that's what this was. So that's why everything needs to change. So I, uh, I originally had thought about doing a two room setup, something like this a separate control room and a separate tracking area because hey everybody wants to have a separate control room right i mean that's how they do it in the big professional studios so i was thinking that's what i wanted to but there's problems so first of all do i need a permit to do this are there structural issues i'm on the second floor up here so i don't know can this even stand to have another wall put in i mean this was an option when the house was built to have a bedroom here instead of this all as one open space but could I actually truly get soundproofing? I mean, you would have flanking issues coming over the top of this in the attic, and you'd have flanking issues underneath. It's all still on the same piece of floor. Now, another problem with doing this was that I would be reducing my volume overall by splitting it up. And I would end up with a very small area as my, uh, my mixing position. So that would be a big problem for low frequencies. Also... Man, it would be just really expensive and a lot of work to do this. So after watching a lot of home studio tours, I realized that I, I really didn't need a two-room studio. So I decided to go with this idea. Now, this will make for an excellent balanced mixing position right here. And in fact, it also will allow for uh, a better surround sound and TV watching experience, which I did not have 
the way it was set up before. The way it was set up before, that was unbalanced, and I, I didn't have my surround sound speakers set up. So I'm going to be building DIY uh, soffit bass traps, and I'm going to be building sound diffusers and sound absorbers. Uh, I'm going to have to build some DIY speaker stands. So as we go through all of this kind of stuff, I'll be um, shooting more videos of each of the steps of the process as I go. And it, the other thing that's going to be great about this is that overall I'm going to have more space. Um, it's going to be a better spot for band practice, for tracking and recording. It's going to be better for uh, parties, hanging out, jam sessions. I'm going to build a new bar. I've already destroyed the old bar. Um, this one will be smaller, and it'll basically be a piece of acoustic furniture. So I'm planning to build a diffuser into it. And there's some issues with this small space right here with the base, so I have an idea for how I can possibly turn this into a, a leaky wall so the base goes through it. So, yeah, that's, that's going to be the new setup. So whenever you're going to do a home recording studio, it's important to plan things out ahead of time. And obviously, as I go, there's things that are not included in this, and there's some things that are going to change. But this program, SketchUp, is really, really useful because you can uh, you can make your furniture and everything that you're planning to put in your room, and you can move it around, and you can see if things fit or not. And that's really, really useful. So there you have it. Okay, everyone, thanks for taking the time to watch the video. I apologize for the audio quality during that narration. I was using these cheap uh, Steel Series gaming headphone microphone combo to do that. I'll be posting more videos as the studio progresses. As always, you can like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.